Hello and welcome to the How to Install XAMPP on Windows. My name is uh, Charles Severance and I'm your host for this uh, brief video. Um, this is sort of part of my SI572 course at uh, University of Michigan School of Information. So you're going to need a programming editor. You can use an interactive development environment such as Eclipse or Dreamweaver or half a dozen other things. I prefer to keep things simple. I use Notepad++ on Windows. I've got this already installed, so I'm not going to show you how to install it. You just go to notepadplus.org and download it and install it. So um, we're going to go to uh, the XAMP uh, Apache Friends XAMP uh, site, and we're going to download XAMP and then install it. Now this is a, a pretty big download, so I'm going to go grab XAMP for Windows. And then I'm going to scroll down, and I am going to uh, download XAMP, and I'm just going to take the installer because life is simpler. Now at this point, I might end up with some need to approve pop-ups. Let's see if it's happening. Ah, see, and I notice the information bar. So I'm going to say yes, download the file, and. Here we go. Let's see if it's going to work this time. It's trying to protect me. So I always like saving these. I don't like saying run. So um, I'm going to save it to my desktop just so I see it when it appears. And I'll just say save. And so this is going to take a little while. Okay. So uh, go get yourself a cup of coffee and uh, come back when it's done downloading. So through the magic of television, we uh, <clears throat> fast forwarded on the download. Uh, make sure that uh, when you're doing this on Vista or Windows 7 that you're doing this as the administrator. Uh, install this as administrator. Some people wisely have two accounts, one where they're administrator and one where they're not an administrator. Um, this is best installed uh, as an administrator because uh, it's going to write to a bunch of files. So our, <clears throat> our download has uh, completed. And uh, at, at this point, I could either click on it on my desktop or I could run it from here. And so I will choose to uh, run it from here. Let's minimize this window. And then I'm going to go ahead and run the downloaded uh, installer. <clears throat> yes, I do want to run it. I'm going to go with English. And it's telling us, all this is saying is it wants us to install this uh, on the C colon backslash rather than in program files. That happens to be the default. So we'll say next, and we'll take the default. This is what they want, and so you shouldn't override that. Um, I never turn on this installing as a service because I want to be able to turn these things on and off from the control panel that you'll see in a bit. And so here we start the installation. This takes a while. Again, through the magic of television, we fast forwarded to it all being finished. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and start the XAMP control panel. And here we are. Now you'll notice it sort of lives in our system tray down here. And uh, we can start uh, Apache, which is the web server, and uh, MySQL. So I'm going to click on Start. And these things are very fast, uh, come up right, pretty much right away. Um, uh, this, in this case, I've been, it's the first time I've done this, so I'm going to have to unblock it. I'm going to have to let this application talk to port 80. That's what this is saying. So I unblock it. Now I'm going to start my SQL. And it's going to be uh, the Apache's on uh, unblock port 888 as well. And so Apache started on port 80, and my SQL started on port 3306. So once you have it running, you can press the admin button. Somehow the MySQL admin doesn't work, but you can get to everything you need by pressing this admin button. And so you go to localhost slash xamp. And so here we have a, uh, <clears throat> a menu of all the kinds of things that you're going to use. So let's do a couple of different things here. Um, uh, welcome. Let's go to uh, PHP info. This is a uh, important thing that tells you a lot about uh, what's installed in your PHP environment. Um, this XAMP has most of the good stuff that we need, and so that's really good. If 
part of the reason we're using XAMPP is so that all this stuff is um, is already there. Um, and so PHP info is a good thing. Um, the, probably the thing you'll spend the most time is in this tool called uh, PHP MyAdmin. And this is sort of your local uh, connection to your MySQL database. And so this is a user interface that's showing that we have a, a series of databases in here. Uh, my font's a little zoomed in. It looks a lot better if you have a little larger screen. I'm keeping my screen size small. And so I'll just, first thing I'll do is let's go ahead and create a database. Um, I'm in the database. I'll create a table, a database called Chuck. Um, it's pretty much set right here. I'll create a database. Let's say create. And so if I go back home here, you'll see that among all the databases, um, <clears throat> I now have one called Chuck. And so that, uh, you know, at, at some point you'll have new tables and databases and this I'm just I'm just showing you this to get started and so I'm gonna go back to a local host here to get back to the XAMPP console and so here we go so let's uh, show you how to write a real simple PHP program and so I'm gonna start notepad and um, I'm gonna create a simple PHP file uh, I'll just start with an HTML file Hello from um, from oops Dr. Chuck's PHP file. I'll just start with HTML and I'm going to do a file, save as, and I'm going to go into my computer. Usually you don't want to be hanging out in uh, your C drive, but I'm going into the XAMPP folder. Then I am going into uh, htdocs, and so I have some folders in here. So I could put it right here. The, this is sort of the all the stuff, but I want to keep this separate. So I'm going to make a new folder, and I'm going to call my new folder SI572. And then I am in the SI572. If you sort of look at the, I'm in C, XAMPP, htdocs, SI572. So that's where I'm at. And I'm going to call this file index.php and then I'm going to save it and of course it sort of does some syntax highlighting because it now knows what's going on. Now I haven't written any PHP because PHP really is an extension of HTML. We'll just start with some flat HTML and so I'm now going to navigate to http colon slash slash localhost slash si572 that was the name of the folder I created and um, here we go. And so it knows that the index.php is the default file to serve in the folder. We would get the same thing if we typed index.php um, with, with the entire file. It would say the same thing. So now let's make a change. And so now we'll actually add a paragraph and then we'll switch into PHP with the uh, less than question mark PHP and then start writing some PHP. Hi there, backslash n. So we're going to put a hi there in a new line, and then we're going to switch back out of PHP and go back into HTML. And so you'll notice that Notepad uh, nicely um, syntax colors for us. And so here we are. I'll resave that, and I'll come over here, and I'll just hit refresh. And so now you see the H1. If I do a quick view source here, um, if I do a quick view source, page source, you can see that these two lines are coming straight from the HTML and then the echo, the print out of the PHP is what's here. So it interpreted this part and ran the program that was PHP. So let's just make a, uh, another little uh, bit of PHP. Um, I'll put a period here and I will say some more PHP answer equals six times uh, six times seven and then I will say echo the answer is dollar answer so we're doing some substitution here um, comma what again was the question put a new line at the end of that and a semicolon 
And then I'm going to save it. And then I will hit a refresh again. So we see that this 42 is the calculated number. Make them small so we can see them all at the same time. All right. And then make it a little smaller. So hi there, the answer is 42. What again was the question? So you see that I've done a calculation. Variable signs, of course, start with a dollar sign. And inside uh, double quoted strings, uh, variables get substituted just by sticking the variable name in. Um, single quoted mm -hmm. strings uh, don't do that. And so here we are. This this again is, um, if I put some another paragraph here, oops, that should be a slash P. Uh, here is another paragraph. Slash P. And then I save that. Oops, no, no, no. I save that. And I hit a refresh again. You see that um, I am successfully going. Here's some HTML. Here's some PHP. Here's the HTML. Here's a PHP. And here's the HTML again. And again, if I just do a view source. We just see that the um, it's all interleaved together, right? There's no, no evidence which came from PHP or which came from HTML. So, uh, and then I'll close all. I'll close this. I'll close this, and then I will stop Apache, and then I will stop <coughs> my SQL. Now, one thing uh, just to show you real quick is if I hit this close button, it doesn't really close. It's here. So if you click this XAMP control panel, it gives you a scary message, but really it's not so scary as long as you remember to come down in your system tray and start it back up. And so we can start and stop these things as often as we like. Okay, so uh, I guess that's it. Um, thanks for listening.